Buenos días, es Nico. Gay asses. Gay. Taking a booty asses. So today, first of all, I want to say this is my new place. Um, now you can clearly see the backdrop instead of it being like in the mirror of my armoire. Uh, <laughs> armoire, I think that's what that is. Armoire, I was trying to be fancy and not say dresser. But also, thank you guys for the 12.5K subscribers. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad that you like this kind of content. I'm gonna keep trying to provide it for you weekly. But also, if you like this kind of content, please check out my Patreon. Nico, yes, I'm stumbling on words. I'm sorry, this is like my fourth time filming this. Please check out my Patreon <laughs> at patreon.com slash Nico's Aesthetics, where there are exclusive videos, weekly lives, and community discussions. Uh, I say this just because I'm gonna have to get another third job. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I had a third job for a long time. And now that I moved out and I have to actually commute to work, <laughs> I have to pay for gas and gas is $4 a gallon. So I'm gonna be busy and running around. So if you wanna help, you could do that and you get extra content of the stuff that you already like. But yeah, let's get started. Essentially, we're gonna be talking about what a money reside, what a money reside. I talked about him slightly on Bad Boys LA, but there was a tweet that came out that said, punk or not, Nico, what's a punk? Let's do a little segue. Punk is what black people call gay people. You know, like punks, punks, meaning they aren't real men. They're like mm, sissies, that kind of thing. It's a derogatory term. So punk or not, whether the money resides is actually very attractive. And if he was a real nigga, I would really enjoy him. I think he said I would fuck with him, but <laughs> I was trying to be PG. Um, yeah, and that's where it starts off. This is another conversation about femininity and the disrespect it receives within the Black community, more specifically the Black gay community. I don't understand why feminine Black gay men or feminine gay men in general refuse to date other feminine men, but when we have conversations about mass for mass and toxic masculinity, they demand that masculine men date feminine men. And this is the rhetoric that I gave also for black people that date exclusively non-black people, but get upset when non-black people don't want to date black people. And that rhetoric is, why would you expect someone to date someone like you when you are not going to date someone like you? Meaning, why would you expect someone to date a feminine man, AKA you, when you would not date another feminine man, AKA you? And you cannot get upset at that point because you're going off the same standards. And I'm gonna stand in that because it doesn't make sense to me how y'all have ample candidates of romantic partners and y'all are always saying, oh, I feel so alone. Oh, feminine men get disrespected. Oh, what a masculine man, what a hood niggas there, what a DL man. But you look over the feminine men in your community when they are still viable options. And I mean, that could trickle down into a conversation about feminine tops because a lot of feminine tops are disregarded for the same reason. If I wanted a woman, I would be with a woman, that kind of stuff. So when we're having this discussion, I want y'all to be honest with your hypocrisy because you can't come on here and demand that masculine men show interest in feminine men. And then you refuse to show interest in feminine men as well. It just, it doesn't make sense because at that point, it's a double standard. You should like me, but I shouldn't have to like other people that are like me. And I mean, it all boils down to preferences. You know, bitches like to run behind that, that phrase, preferences. But at the same time, a preference is, I prefer chicken over beef, but if we don't have chicken, I will eat beef. Y'all are saying these are a requirement. That is not a preference, that's a requirement. And I wish we could stop using that word incorrectly. So while we're having this discussion, I want y'all to be very direct as to why in the comments, if you're one of these feminine men that does not date other feminine men, but are constantly complaining about being single and unwanted within the community, why do you refuse to date other people that are like you? And this isn't coming from, you know, someone that's a double standard, you know, y'all know me well enough. I'm very metro. I embrace my femininity. I embrace my masculinity, but I also date extremely feminine men. And I don't know if that's the bisexual in me. I've never been one of those people that's like, if I wanted a woman, I would date a woman. I've dated people that painted their nails. I've dated people that wore makeup. I've dated people that sometimes use lace fronts because they were hairstylists. Like it doesn't bother me. <laughs> as long as I like your personality, 
the eccentrics does not bother me because like I said, I too can embrace my femininity, whether it be my voice getting higher, uh, queer vernacular, or just some gay shit. Like I can say gay shit at times, but it's all about being open-minded when going into a dating landscape because we also need to remember we are the minority. Like certain cities, Houston, for example, there are tons of gay people, tons of little, tons of girlies, but then you gotta boil it down to, are they interested in you? Are your positions reciprocative? What do you mean? Top or bottom? Versatile or strict top? Because I've been in a situation where I've had to date strict tops and it was agonizing because I don't bottom. <laughs> I don't bottom often and when I did, it was unpleasant because tangent for some reason I, I I always attract like tops of big dicks random tangent I don't know what it is I, I guess I just got the juice point is I've been in situations where I've dated total tops and it was annoying for the both of us because we would both have to bottom every now and then and it was just uncomfortable and neither of us were fully satisfied so once you boil it down to that then you have to boil it down to personality you've gotten past you're both attracted to each other you can actually have sex with each other but now you have to worry about if you actually click there are so many hurdles that you have to jump through to find someone that is a suitable candidate for dating to justify discarding people and saying that they're not a viable option just because they are like you that's the thing it's not even like the concept of mask for mask, where it's like, I want somebody that's masculine like me because they're wanting something that's just like them. Y'all are asking for something that's not like you. You're saying, I don't want someone that's like me. I want somebody completely different and they have to want me as well. Like it, I... and y'all know I'm one of those people that I'm usually tearing into masculine girls just because they think they're different. They think they're better or whatever. But this is a conversation that irks me because y'all hide behind the label of preference and continue to cry online about being single and lonely and how men don't want you and how masculine men, they only want other masculine men, but you're overlooking feminine men to chase after them. But yeah, definitely drop your opinions down below. How do you feel about feminine men that say, I strictly date only masculine men and disrespect and invalidate other feminine men as romantic or sexual options. How do you feel about the mask for mask rule? How do you feel about the femme for femme rule? Do you think we should all just be open or should we just chase after other people that align with us? Or should we try to model ourselves after the heteronormative counterparts that a lot of people tend to do, especially feminine men, where it's a feminine man that takes on the role of a woman or a masculine man that takes over the role as a man? Definitely drop your opinions down below. And I'm glad this first video in my new place is finally finished because it's like my fourth time doing it. But yeah. Boop. And once again, a quick thank you to all my patrons on Patreon and a quick shout out to my third eye tier patrons. Your support means everything to me and helps me do this a lot more smoothly. I will also be listing this week's live stream topic in case anybody wants to join in on the fun. I will see you guys there.